Jesus, the same God who healed, let me You are the one who makes me strong. And even though I walk through the valley long, I don't have to fear no more. You have called me from my sorrows to gladness. I have one more good Raise my 
to come to America around our nation during this difficult time that we're all facing. But I have faith in my God today. My hope is not in mankind. My hope is not in what they can tell us. My hope is in the Lord today. Amen. He's in control of the affairs of mankind. He knows exactly what's going on today. And this didn't surprise God. Amen. This didn't surprise God at all. So here we are this morning. And uh, we are keeping our safe distance from one another. Asking everybody to please stay in your vehicles today. The church is closed uh, as far as restrooms or anything like that. And that's just asking for safety from everybody here. We're taking precautions according to what the government has asked of us. And uh, there's probably more close contact at the grocery store than we'll have. But I'm thankful for each and every one of you that are here this morning. And to anybody that's listening online. Thank you for joining with us today. We appreciate you being a part of our service. And we're expecting God to do great things. And uh, we're expecting God to revive our land. Amen. Second Chronicles 7, 14, the scripture said, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sins, and will heal their land. Yesterday, around the world, there were thousands, actually hundreds of thousands of people that prayed together for God to heal our land. And even in other countries, binding together with many, many churches, thousands of churches across the world yesterday, united together in prayer for God to heal our land and to revive us. And he keeps his word. God watches over his word to confirm it and to perform it. So we're going to pray today. And uh, if you have a need today, where you're at in your vehicle or watching online, listening online, I want you to pray. I want you to tell the Lord what that need is. We're also going to pray today for several smaller churches that are struggling today to survive through all of this time that we pray for weekly. And uh, several home missions churches here in California, other parts of the country, we want to lift them before the Lord today. If you have a prayer request, lift it to the Lord with us together right now. And we're going to take a moment. I want you to take the time to pray today. That God would help our nation, help our community in Ventura and the county, the surrounding area. We want God to help us. So let's pray together right now. Jesus, we thank you today, Lord, that you hear every cry of every human being, Lord, every prayer prayed today, Lord. We ask you this morning, Lord, that you would reach down today, Lord. We ask today for your help, God, against the coronavirus, God, that you would give us deliverance. Lord, we pray, God, to rebuke the devourer in the name of Jesus. We pray today, Lord, that your hand would be upon this city, upon this county, upon our state, on this nation, other parts of the world today. God, we're asking you, Lord, for your divine help and favor in the name of Jesus. You are more than able this morning, God. Every need that's represented today, Lord, by different vehicles, different vehicles, different people here today, Lord, and online, we pray, God, that you would touch those needs today, that you would provide. We pray for this community. We pray for this neighborhood, God, that you would bring healing in this land, God, that your spirit would move and touch each and every one in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you're in control. We thank you, Lord, that you are aware of where we're at. We thank you, Lord, that you're here every prayer being prayed today. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise today in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody shout where you're at in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible said all power in heaven and earth is in the name of Jesus. When you begin to speak the name of Jesus, he pays attention. When you begin to talk about Jesus, he knows right where we're at. Amen. There's something about the name of Jesus that has all power to heal, to deliver, to set free, and to revive our land. Praise God. Praise God. I'm thankful today for the presence of Almighty God in the middle of a parking lot. On a Sunday morning, he's right here where two or three are gathered together in his name. Praise God. Praise God. We're going to worship in song one more time today.
God good to anybody else. He's good all the time. He never failed anybody, never let anybody down. He's always faithful. And I'm glad for each and every one of you here this morning for what God is doing. And uh, looking forward to the remainder of this this morning. And may I also mention while we're here, if you if you want to give to the church today, uh, Brother Steve is in the vehicle. Wave your hand out and he'll help you out here in a little bit towards the end of it. But uh, please follow any directions from anybody that's helping here so there will be no complications or problems. This evening at 6 p.m., we'll be live on Facebook, I'm sorry, on a YouTube channel. And uh, if you need the link, let us know before you leave. And uh, we're going to keep doing what we've been doing because that's all we're allowed by our government right now at this time. We do want to honor what our government has asked of us during this critical time for our nation. It may be a little difficult. I do miss being in close contact with each of you, and I'm sure you feel the same way towards each other in the church. And uh, we want to be there for one another, pray for one another. Please pray for this neighborhood, pray for our community, pray for the city that God would help each and every one that's struggling right now. There's many people losing their jobs. There are sick people in our community from this virus, and uh, we know that God can intervene and help us. Our prayers do make a difference. You may not think your one prayer doesn't matter. It makes a difference to everybody. So we keep praying, believing God to help us today and strengthen and touch hearts and minds. And uh, evangelist with us today, Brother Andrew Howard. Most of you are very familiar with his ministry in our church over the last few years. We want him to come today. I want him to preach, obey the Lord, and uh, do what he actually feels to do today. And I told him he has full liberty to do as he feels this morning. Amen. How many is going to help him preach today? Amen. God bless you as he comes.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Well, didn't expect to see you again under these circumstances, but I'm thankful to be in the presence of the Lord, and I'm thankful that his presence isn't regulated to the four walls of a building. He said, we're two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them, and I believe we've come in the name of the Lord Jesus, and his presence is here. And I feel it right now. Right. Amen. Amen. These are troubling times. Amen. But I've got joy. Amen. I didn't say I was happy about everything. Right. Jesus didn't promise us happiness. He promised us joy. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I have joy, and joy isn't determined by my circumstances. Joy is not determined by what I'm facing. I can have joy in the midst of sorrows. I can have joy in the midst of problems. So I'm thankful for the joy of the Lord and the peace of the Lord. If we need anything right now in the church, we need the peace of God. Because I can promise you our world has no peace right now. Our world has no peace. Our neighbors have no peace. But the people of God. If we will live in peace right now, we can positively impact our world, our neighbors, everyone that we are able to come in contact with and reach right now. And uh, so thank you for the opportunity to be here with you. And I do believe the Lord has given me direction. And I know that we are limited somewhat by the setting that we're in right now. But I pray that you would open your heart, open your mind, your spirit. And let's connect with the Lord. How many believe that God can move right where you're sitting, right in your vehicle? God can speak a word. God can give direction. There's no limit for God to heal right where you're sitting, for God to fill someone with the Holy Ghost, whether you're on the premises or you're watching or you can hear the sound of my voice. I'm going to tell you today that God can minister to you, that God can help you. God's power has not been limited. It has not stopped. His arm is not short. Neither is he slack concerning his promises. Praise God. And if you are listening, if you are watching, and you do not know the Lord, and you're troubled today, I want to tell you, and I mean this sincerely, you have reason to be troubled. You have reason to be disturbed. If you are troubled today, that is an indication that your life is void of the presence of God. The only way you can make it through the times that we are living in and the things that we are about to go through is you need the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the Lord, living on the inside of you. Jesus said, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What does that mean? Peter explained the words of Jesus further in Acts, the second chapter, by saying, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. What does that mean? That's being born of water. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's being born of the Spirit. I'm telling you today that the Lord desires to fill people with the Holy Ghost. We've seen people receive the Holy Ghost in the midst of this crisis. The Holy Ghost does not stop being poured out in the middle of crisis. Right now is the greatest time the church has ever known. Hallelujah. Well, we're stuck in our car. That isn't limiting the power of God. God is just as powerful right now to heal, to save, to deliver, to restore. Amen. Amen. We've been pushing the church to get outside the walls of the building for a long time. And God's given us that opportunity. Praise God. And God's going to work through this. Amen. If you have a device, a Bible, or if you'd rather just listen to me, we're going to read from a couple of passages. Matthew chapter 24 and verse number 3. We'll also read from 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 13. While you're turning there, I want to thank a pastor for allowing us to be here today, allowing me to be here. I came alone uh, today. Man. I know people like me better when I bring my family, but just due to circumstances, this was a bit easier. And uh, it's good to see everybody today, even though we can't greet each other like we normally would. We're here in spirit. Amen. Matthew chapter 24, and verse number three. Now, I ask you today that 
uh, while our response is limited, let's do give a response. Let's receive what the Lord would say. Matthew 24 and verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse number 13. Beginning at verse 13. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain this is the lord speaking or if i command the locusts to devour the land or if i send pestilence among my people if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will i hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land Amen. Today, I have not come to preach a message of negativity, but a message of faith, hope, of revival. I want to talk to you from this thought this morning, our response to the times. Our response to the times. Right where you are, would you just close your eyes and just open your heart right now and just begin to reach out to the Lord. Let's pray right now together. Let's not be intimidated by our surroundings. Let's lift our voices right now and let the Holy Ghost begin to move. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we take authority over every spirit that would resist us today and your will in Jesus' name. Let there be a free flow of your spirit. Let there be a liberty of your spirit in this area. In the name of Jesus, we are believing you to speak, to work, to minister. We're believing that this is going to reach not just those gathered here, but those that can hear the sound of our voice, that will be watching this online. We are believing you to minister, to move, to save, to heal, that your will will be completely accomplished in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's just praise God together right now for what we're believing him to do in both of our services today. Would you just praise God right now? I know you're in your vehicle. Would you just lift your voice as you're able to? Thank you, Jesus. God, we give you praise. We give you glory. You're still great. And you're still greatly to be praised. You're still on the throne. You're still in control of everything, Lord. Nothing is happening without your permission. We give you praise, honor, and glory today in Jesus' name. Amen. In the passage that we read, the disciples asked the Lord, what will be the sign of your coming? What will be the sign of the end of the world? How can we know? We want to know what to look for. We want to know what to expect. And Jesus answers them with a series of signs that they can watch for. He said, first, false prophets and false religions and deceivers will arise and say that they have the answers and they will be able to persuade many people to follow after them. They will lie. They will deceive people. And we see that prevalent in our world today, religions of all forms, ideas of all forms, followings, groups, you name it. He said there will be wars and rumors of wars. There is constant war upon this earth right now. There is constant clashing of swords. There's constant threatening and rumors of wars and this nation rising against another. It's happening all the time, constantly. He said that nation will rise against nation. This is not a kingdom as much as it is an ethnic group. We are seeing a rise of racism like never before. Hatred among people of opposite cultures and skin color. Kingdom shall rise against kingdom. Wars. He said there will be famines. We are seeing uh, perhaps not here in Ventura, but certainly across our world. There is much hunger. There is great famine. There are people in places right now 
even that have no means to gather food. There is a shortage of food in the earth like there has never been in certain places. He said there will be earthquakes in diverse places. In the last week or so, there have been earthquakes across our nation in places that do not typically uh, have earthquakes. A second passage described locusts that he would send upon the land. This is not to be uh, strange, but in Africa right now, there is a plague of locusts that is reaching apocalyptic proportions like something you would read about in the book of Exodus. These are signs of the time. These are the signs that the Lord said to look for when you want to know when I am going to return and when the end of the earth will be. He said that this will be the beginning of sorrows. That sorrow is translated also as pain, or you could even describe it as labor pain. This is the beginning of pain that is coming upon the earth, and that is what we are witnessing today, the beginning of trouble, the beginning of pain that is coming upon the earth. It is a signal. It is a sign. It is a red flag that is being waved by heaven, a warning of what is to come. This disease that we are facing right now, this plague that's upon the earth, the quarantine that has been put upon our nation, uh, I'm going to just tell you, it's going to lift. And things are going to return back to normal uh, as much as they can for a period of time. But you've got to understand, not to be negative, but to be totally in the word today, that worse things are going to come upon the earth like we have never seen before. It's a promise in his word. But the good news is that the church is not supposed to be troubled because he promised that this would come. He promised that this would happen. We are rather to rejoice. Why? Because his return is soon. God is coming back after a bride that had made herself ready. I'm glad to be a part of the body of Christ and the bride of Christ. I'm glad to know that the signs that we are seeing is God waving his hand. I have not forgotten you. I know exactly where you are. I'm giving you a sign that I'm coming soon. Anybody thankful that the Lord is coming back? And if we had hope in this life only, we would be of all men most miserable. But there is another life. We're going to cross over and be able to live forever. We'll be free of viruses. We'll be free of poverty. We'll be free of all the things that we feel pressuring upon us today. Well, hallelujah. Amen. If, it, if anyone here, anyone that can hear me, anyone that is watching is troubled and fearful about what we are seeing, what we are feeling. I, I know everybody here, including myself, we feel much pressure upon us right now, pressure like we've never felt before, and it is unrelenting and unwavering. But if you are troubled and, and fearful because of that, that is an indication of your spiritual condition. If you're troubled and stirred, perhaps even afraid right now, that is the Lord allowing pressure upon you not to frighten you, but to draw you close to him. God is trying to awaken people that he is in control and nothing else, that he governs the earth, that he is the one that has the final say. Praise God. Amen. We have depended upon our employers we have depended upon our health care programs. We have depended upon entertainment. We have depended upon socializing. We have depended upon social media. We have even depended upon traditional church services and functions. And God has done in one moment to the gods of this world what he did to the gods of Egypt. He has shown the world who is God and who is not. He has shown the world that nothing can happen without my say-so, that nothing can function unless I get the word. I've come to tell you today, it's not your health that is upholding you. It is the hand of the Lord. It is not your strength and energy that's brought you here. It's a good God full of love and grace and mercy that has put oxygen inside of you. Come on, let's put food in your 
your cupboard that's put money in your pocket it's by the hand of the Lord and by nothing else and if you can get a revelation of that you can live in this kind of pressure with the peace of God upon you God will never leave you nor forsake you hallelujah, hallelujah. God is not intimidated by what is happening God has allowed what is happening God's not frustrated. God is not concerned. God is not fearful. God has given authority to what is happening. And it will prevail upon the earth as long as God gives it authority to do so. And God can speak the word and everything be instantly changed because God has all the power. Praise God. Amen. Amen. By crushing our gods, he has caused people to finally... Turn back to him. Even there are people praying right now that have not prayed in such a long time. There are people praying right now that have never prayed before. Even there are governors getting up on national television and they're saying things like, God bless you and, and we're praying for you. Things that they have never said before. And you know what's interesting? I don't hear atheists and I don't hear other groups complaining about it. I'm seeing more. I, I passed by a public uh, uh, business earlier and said, this too shall pass. I don't know if they realize that came from scripture. Everybody is looking for some kind of message of hope. No one wants to stop people from praying in this kind of hour. Even God is directing people's attention to him. I am your source for everything. I am what you have looked for your entire life. You'll never find it in all of the things that you've searched for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even God is showing the world that he is real and that he is in control. Amen. Time is running out and his return is soon and if you're listening to me amen if you've ever thought about living for god if you've ever thought about coming back to god now is the moment you need to make a move now is the time to make a decision we are not promised tomorrow but right here and right now we have a moment with god the bible says today is the day of salvation i'm telling you that it is not too late to get right it is not too late to be saved there is hope in jesus there is deliverance in Jesus. There is salvation in Jesus. There is freedom from fear. There is freedom from anxiety. There is freedom from depression. Anybody believe that today? In the Lord, there is freedom. Amen. God sent the prophet Elijah to declare his message and to ask the people, how long will you halt between two opinions? How long will you stumble back and forth between me and the gods of this world? How long will you pretend to serve me and other gods that cannot help you, but they only make your life worse? Amen. Elijah was not challenging unbelievers. He was talking to the people of God. It was a God-given ultimatum that it is time that we make a decision. Choose ye this day whom ye will serve. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, O generation, see ye the word of the Lord. Have I been a wilderness unto Israel, a land of darkness? Wherefore say my people, we are lords. We will come no more unto thee. Can a maid forget her ornaments or a bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. Amen. God was giving them a message. You have turned away from me. You have forgotten me. And you've reached to your own devices. You've searched for other gods that cannot help you. God sent a drought upon their land because they had abandoned him. After he showed his power on Mount Carmel and sent fire down, they turned their hearts back to the Lord. And what was God's response to that? He sent rain upon the earth. He sent healing upon their land. I'm here to declare to you today that repentance brings healing. That repentance brings restoration. That repentance brings revival. That repentance is always followed by an outpouring of the Spirit of God. It was the winds of Pentecost that were ushered in by repentance. Amen. If the church will repent and if the church will pray, the world will have a chance to repent. Our neighbors will have a chance to have God and to know the Lord. 
Amen. A revival of repentance, a revival of prayer. It will bring earth shaking, kingdom shaking revival like we have never seen before. A revival of backsliders. Amen. A revival of miracle signs and wonders. A harvest of souls. That is the will of God. I prophesy to you this year the kingdom of God is going to grow like it has never grown before. We're going to see more people filled with the Holy Ghost. We're going to see more people here. That isn't just me being positive. It's the will of God. It's what God intends to do. I wonder how many of you want to be a part of that. I don't want to just watch it, God, but put me right in the middle of it, Lord. I want to experience that for myself. I want that for my family. I want that for my neighborhood. I want that for those I know that are away from God right now. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost here right now. Praise God. Amen. If you've been away from God for a time, I'm telling you right now that God is ready. He is willing to forgive. No mistake that you've made is too great. No sin that you have committed is too much for him. We still serve a God that is full of mercy and love. He's got more mercy than you have failure. He's got more forgiveness than you have sin. I'm telling you, we need to make a choice today. God is reaching for every heart and for every Every life. Hallelujah. He always brings pressure upon the church as well as the world to awaken us, to awaken the church. When he began to move in the land of Egypt, he brought pressure upon his people as well as upon Egypt to get his people ready. Pharaoh increased their labors. Pharaoh said, you'll make your bricks without straw. I will not provide it for you anymore. You'll have to find it yourself. He increased their workload. He made things more difficult. And to people in that setting, it, it may have seemed depressing. It may have seemed like a setback, but God was getting them ready. We're about to move out of here. You're about to leave this place. It will not be like this much longer. I'm getting you ready. I'm sending a sign of what is coming, your direction. Hallelujah. He put pressure upon the book of Acts church in Acts chapter 3. His last words to his disciples as he ascended into heaven was go ye into all the world and preach the gospel into all the world to every creature. And what we find for over three years, they stayed in Jerusalem. They stayed, so to speak, in the four walls of their church. They enjoyed their local revival. And Jesus sent pressure upon the church by way of great persecution. And it drove them out of their comfort zone into all the earth as he had commanded them to do. And they shook the known world with revival. I'm telling you, God is awakening the church. Amen. Don't try to escape the pressure that we are feeling by constantly entertaining yourself as so many are doing. This is not a time to snuggle. This isn't a time to sleep and to pass the time. Amen. Many are trying to escape pressure that God has purposely allowed to come upon us. I mean, this is why this is upon the church right now. If God wanted to shield us from this, he could have done so easily. He has allowed it to awaken us. Amen. God is awakening the church. There is purpose in the pressure that you're feeling. He is shaking a sleeping giant to rise up in power and to be what he has determined they can be. Amen. Paul said, and no, but knowing the time, it is now high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Praise God. I feel the Holy Ghost moving just for a moment. I'm almost done. Would you reach out to the Lord right where you're at? Let's just pray and allow the Spirit to speak. Allow the Lord to stir. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord, let your presence move. Amen. Let your Spirit work among every heart that's here. Lord, in the name of Jesus, reach through every medium right now that we're streaming through and touch hearts and minds, I pray. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says the last living apostle John was isolated. Musicians can come. He was isolated, exiled to the island of Patmos. He was sent there to die. They had tried to execute him, but they had not been able to kill him. 
He was sent to a place where men were abandoned, where they were sent to be broken. He was cut off from everything that he knew. He had no church. He had nothing. He had no friends. He had no one to help him, no one to work with him. He had no live stream services. He had no internet. He had no social media. He had no way to connect with anybody. He had no one that could help him. Hallelujah. He could not avoid the place that he was in. No one was there to comfort him. Darkness surrounded him in the place that he was in. But John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. I'm telling someone it's time to turn the news off and get off of negative social media feeds and get away from spreading fear and panic and stop listening and talking to people. All they can do is spew fear. It's time to get in the spirit. That is how we can escape what we are facing. It's in the spirit that we find what we're looking for. Amen. God has allowed pressure upon us not to complain, not to gripe, not to accuse him for putting more on us than we can bear, but so that we would rise up as believers, as the church, and get in the spirit to pray. Hallelujah. The passage I read to you, we always quote the second verse, if my people which are called by my name, but back up to the preceding verse. He said, if I shut up heaven, who is speaking here? This is God. God has always been in control, and he will always be in control. There is no epidemic, no pandemic, no sickness that has escaped him. Nothing can happen upon the earth unless God allows it to do so. He said, if I, how many knows that God's in control? How many believe that God is still in control? Regardless of whether your employer has sent you home, regardless of whether you feel sickness in your body, regardless of whether you're concerned about certain circumstances in your life, that God is still in control. Do you believe that today? He said, if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain. If I command the locusts to devour the land, if I send pestilence, that means disease, if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, that's not the world. How many here have been baptized in Jesus' name? If my people, which are called by my name, the name of Jesus, if you've got the name of Jesus upon you, this is talking to you, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. He said, this will be my response to their prayer. Then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. I'm telling you, it's time for prayer to erupt in the church. It's time for prayer to erupt in your home. It's time for prayer to erupt in your neighborhood. It's time to pray with unsafe family. It's time to pray with next door neighbors. I'm telling you, prayer still changes everything. Do you believe that today? Even prayer still moves mountains. Prayer still shakes kingdoms. Prayer can always change the spiritual landscape and God is listening to your prayer. God is moving according to your prayer. Come on, he said, if my people, he said, when I hear their prayer, that's when I begin to move. When I hear the prayers of my people that have my name upon them, that have my blood covering them, that's who I begin to respond to. I wonder right there in your vehicle or wherever you are watching this, if you would begin to reach out to the Lord. Begin to call upon the name of Jesus right now. Would you close your eyes and just begin to focus on him with all of your heart in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah for the Holy Ghost in this house right now. Come on everyone just reach out to the Lord for just a moment. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. 
I'm telling you, there is a wave of harvest that is coming to this earth like we have never seen before. There is a harvest of souls that is coming not just to Ventura, not just to America. I believe it's going to sweep around the globe, and we can be a part of that right here in our city. I believe with all of my heart, this is the last great awakening that God is sending upon the earth. The Bible said the plow man shall overtake the reaper. I believe we're going to sow seed and be able to reap immediate harvest. Just the other night we had a prayer session. The church that we were at, the young lady come in, never been to church before. We gave her just a, a few minutes of a Bible study. And then I took her to the altar to pray with her. And she was filled with the Holy Ghost. We baptized her in Jesus' name. We had just sown the seed. She never knew the Lord, never heard about truth. Amen. I'm telling you, that's the kind of harvest that God can give the church. No more six months of Bible study. People are coming hungry right now. People are tired of waiting. People are tired of hurting. Amen. They're looking to God right now. It's time for the church to shine. Our light can shine brightest. The darker it kids hallelujah this is not a setback this is an opportunity this is a springboard for revival even god is positioning the church to prevail like never before he's getting us ready for harvest it's time to pray it's time to believe it's time to reach it's time to be the church it's time to rise up like never before we are not a building but we are the church right here even you are a part of the church of the living god i'm telling you if if you're watching right now, if you're listening right now, you can receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. If you're listening to me right now, you can be totally healed in your body. Oh, one more time, I wish we would reach out to the Lord and begin to call upon his name. Would you do that right where you are? Even wherever you are listening to me. I'm telling you the antidote for the virus, it's not a medicine or a cure, but it's the power of the Spirit of the living God. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. Let's pray together in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, we're hungry for you to move. We're hungry for you to work. God, we desire you to heal our land. We desire you to work among our nation, among our the members of our community, the members of our family. God, we want you to move like you've never moved before. I wish somebody else would just lift your voice in prayer. Don't be intimidated by your surroundings right now. Don't be afraid to get in the Holy Ghost. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we're hungry for revival. We're hungry for a move of your spirit. We're hungry for you to work in Jesus' name. Oh, let's reach out to the Lord. If it's appropriate there in your vehicle, why don't you take a, the hand of someone next to you, put a hand on somebody, and let's just begin to pray together. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we're hungry for revival. Don't be afraid to speak with tongues. Don't be afraid to let tears flow. Don't be afraid to lift your voice. God, we are believing. We are anticipating. We are expecting revival. In the name of the Lord, let's lift our voice together. Let's lift our voice together. God, we don't just want healing for our land, but we want revival. We don't just want the pressure to be lifted, God, but we want a harvest of souls. We don't want our circumstances just to improve alone, God, but we want revival like we've never seen before. If you're able to, why don't you lift a hand right now, and let's just call upon him in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Call upon the Lord. We love you, Jesus. We believe you, Lord God. We believe you to move. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right where you are, just continue to reach out to the Lord. We're hungry for you, Jesus. We're hungry for you, Jesus. We're hungry for you, Lord Jesus. We're hungry for the move of your spirit. Revival is coming. Restoration is coming. Harvest is coming. Outpouring is coming. God, we're ready. We're believing. We're expecting, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're believing for greater things than we've seen before. Oh, hallelujah. 
Yeah. 
today, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings upon us today, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your help today, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord, Jesus. Thank God. What a great God we serve today that we can feel his presence in a parking lot, sitting in our car, in our houses, listening, watching online, whichever you may be doing right now. The Lord is with us, and he hears every prayer. He is involved in what's happening right now. And it's a good time to pray. It's a good time to read the word of the Lord. It's a good time to talk to people about their need for the Lord. There's a lot of crisis in our nation, our world. Some experts are saying that more people will die from suicide in the next few weeks than will die from the virus because of the depression, the hopelessness, all that's happening. But I'm here today to Tell Ventura and Ventura County that we're praying for peace. We're praying for the Spirit of the Lord to touch. We're praying today that God would minister to hearts and minds. Amen. We don't want anybody to feel left out and feel like you can't make it, that it's hopeless. You can call area code 805 659 2024. 805 659 2024. Two four, we'll pray with you. We'll help you. Leave a message. We'll contact you. We want the Lord to help you, touch you today. You don't have to be in this alone. God's with us. He's fighting for us. He'll help you right where you're at today. If you want prayer? You call. Leave a prayer request, and uh, we'll pray for you. If you don't want to be your name to be known, that's fine as well. We want to pray for you today and ask God to help you. We're going to pray one more time before we're finished here this after, this morning and ask God to reach down and help each and every one that's feeling the effects of this. Many have lost their jobs. Many are going through heartache right now over this and fear and worry. And as was preached today, there's hope in Jesus today. Amen. Amen. I have faith in him this afternoon, this morning, to reach down and help us. Amen. Let's one more time. I want us to pray for this community, pray for one another, pray for revival. Amen. Pray for those that are struggling, trying to cope with this. God's able to help them right now. Let's lift the Lord, lift them to the Lord right now. Jesus, we're thankful today that you're with us today, God. We pray for each and every one that's listening, each and every one that's involved today. I pray, God, that you would reach into this community, this city, God, that you would minister to hearts and minds, that you would bring peace right now, Lord. We ask in that name that's above every name, Lord Jesus. You're the hope that we need today, God. We pray for your help right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your help. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen. This afternoon, we'll be online at 6 p.m. Evangelist Andrew Howard will be preaching for us again this afternoon at 6 p.m. Also Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. We're going to keep our services as scheduled online until further notice. We're going to continue believing God to help us. If you're able to help out financially, let us know. We have to keep the lights on and keep things moving forward. And uh, God is helping us, fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, bringing revival. Amen. I think it'd be good if everybody just honked your horn for Jesus one time. All right. Amen. God bless you today. Thank you for coming. And uh, if you have anything to give, they have it right here. Amen. Wave your hand out of your vehicle. Somebody help you. Amen. Stay close to where you're at. Don't be out of the vehicles walking around. Except Brother Steve's going to help us out. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. Amen. Call somebody today and encourage them. Amen. Pray for one another. Pray for our neighborhood. Pray for our community. Pray for the city. Pray for your family and kin folks. Amen. God bless you today. Amen. Go in Jesus' name. Keep the faith and we'll see you soon.